there we go this is better I've just gone live by accident on my personal profile so everybody on my timeline probably wondered what the hell was going on <laughs> so now I've pre-warned you lot um, that I am gonna go live and do this video because I've got a gap between clients so we are talking about to wait or not to wait so when you come on if you give me like a thumbs up or a love heart or something and um, we can get we can get chatting on whether we should be weighing whether should we should not be weighing whether that's conducive to the way forwards whether you're setting yourself up for the day well um and that's what we're going to talk about hi becky jane hoyle becky jane hoyle's always here for my live videos <laughs> so if you do have any questions about um weighing yourself or anything like that i know some of you have already written them in the group i'm just going to take, take my jacket off because i'm bloody roasting um then just pop up and just write them in below because I know some of you have already posted them to me anyway. So we'll just go from there. I'm not the hairdressers either. I look like I'm at the hairdressers, don't I? But I am not. Hi. So if you're all coming on, like I said, just give me some um, some love hearts and um, some legs. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit sweaty as well. You can probably see my hair needs a good wash. Yes, it does. Um, so yeah, like I said in the group, if um, you do have any questions or anything, I am intrigued to know whether you are weighing yourself because I've got a couple of clients who, who again, I have to have a bit of a talking to with them because they get a bit obsessed with weighing themselves. And I know somebody did mention that on one of the, the questions that you posted in the group. So I am going to address that as well as we get into it. So first things first, should you be weighing yourself? Um, it is a really good gauge of how you're getting on with your progress, but what you've got to consider is that some people don't reflect very well on a scale. And that doesn't go for everybody, because like I said, it is a pretty good gauge. It does give you a bit of an idea of what's going on, but it is an average over the week, not just from like a day-to-day -day basis, because I know that I can weigh myself on an evening, and I can weigh like four pounds heavier, at the night than I do in the morning so you know there's certain things where you do when you weigh yourself that you do have to be aware of so what I'd suggest if you are getting a little bit obsessed with weighing yourself if it is the only thing that you're doing take some pictures take some tape measurements maybe get somebody else to take your tape measurements you don't have to do it yourself um, and just keep an eye on all little bits of progress because the thing is when you wake up in the morning and you weigh yourself that again and I know I've been talking a lot this week about um, setting yourself up for the day but if you're one of them people who you know that it's not going to be conducive you know it's going to put you in a bad mood in the morning um, and you're going to set your day up, you're going to set your, your, your week up by what it says on the scale, if it's giving you a shitty number, then maybe consider weighing yourself might be something that you do once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, maybe stay off the scales for a little bit. Um, you know, so just give yourself some other avenues to kind of look at in terms of tracking your progress. And that is why I like to do a lot of weight training with the girls that I train, because it, you're not just putting all your self value on one number that's coming up on a scale. You know, with, with your weight training, you can kind of quantify your results, whether you're getting your PBs, whether you can feel yourself getting stronger. It gives you a little bit more value to what you're trying to achieve. So again, just look at it. If you are one of these people who's getting to the point where you're getting obsessed with the weight on the scale, just, seriously take away take a step back from it um so i get asked quite a lot like what the best time of day is to weigh yourself so what i like to do and what i tell a lot of my girls to do is one don't weigh yourself necessarily on a monday morning especially if you've had a bit of a heavy weekend because it's probably not going to give you a number that you like um and again if you are one of them people that is going to be in a bad mood from what it's telling you in the morning you're just setting your whole week up as a shit week already um so what I tend to do is I tell a lot of the girls that I train, because some of the girls that I train, I might train in the afternoon. So they weigh themselves on their own. Make sure you use the same scales every week. So using the same the same, <laughs> same scales is what I'm trying to say. The same scales. Weigh yourself as well under the same conditions. So you want to be exactly the same position with your scales so just keep the environment the same so then you don't have an excuse to kind of go yeah but maybe it with this and maybe it with that maybe i had my socks on and maybe if i just um so scales in the same place if you are weighing yourself exactly the same condition so have a wee have a poo if you need a poo um <laughs> just keep everything the same so if you weigh yourself in the morning make sure you're weighing yourself 
in a morning every week. Don't start doing the thing where you weigh yourself one morning, then you might weigh yourself two days later in an evening, then you weigh yourself, you know, it, it's just, it's not gonna give you a true reflection of what's going on. And what you've gotta remember with it is that your weight is an average of what's happened over that week. And you probably notice yourself if you do weigh yourself, on a Wednesday you might weigh two pounds more, two days later you might weigh two pounds less, and then by the time it's come for your actual weighing day, your official weighing day, um, it might be that um, you know, you've averaged between them two numbers. So you can't really think of it as, well, I weigh this one day and I weigh this the next day. You've got to think of it as an average over that weight. That is what your weight should be giving you. If you start weighing yourself every day and getting obsessed with it, it's not going to be conducive to what you're trying to achieve and it's going to give you a bit of a, a head um, a head fuck. So, um, mm -mm -mm. I'm just having a look at some of the questions that some of you were uh, wrote in the group. Yeah, so the reason why as well, I tend not to tell the girls that I train to weigh themselves on a Monday, especially if they've been out for, um, and I don't mean a heavy weekend necessarily of drinking, but if you've been out for your tea and you've had a carb-filled weekend, you can weigh more on a Monday from the water that you're going to retain from your carbs, because that is what happens. You eat more carbs, you can retain more water. So again, on a Monday morning, this happened recently One of the girls with one of the girls that I'm training at the minute, one of my brides, um, she weighed herself on Monday morning, and I told her not to, and what did she do? She weighed herself, and she weighed five pounds heavier than she had previous. And from what she told me, that is the exact reason why I was saying don't weigh yourself on Monday, don't weigh yourself on Monday, because she did, she weighed five pounds heavier by the Wednesday, it had all gone. And that's the thing, that's something else you've got to look out for. So, again, if you're going to weigh yourself, pick a day, keep the conditions the same, um, and try and get a few different methods going on. Clothes are a really good gauge as well. If you've got, like, some jeans, give it a few weeks, just keep trying them on. And again, don't get obsessed with it. Just give it a few weeks. The same with your pictures and stuff as well. Space it out. Don't start taking pictures daily because it's not going to give you a reflection of what's going on. So some of the questions were, um, I think it was Charlotte said, I weigh weekly. I've not done photos or measurements for a few. She put monies, but I don't know if she meant months. A few monies. Um, I think she might have meant months. Um, should I be doing them as often as... I think she means as often as she weighs herself. Now, what you'll find with photos and body fat measurements as well, because with the girls that I train, I take the body fat measurements with calipers, but I'll only do that every, like, four to eight weeks. I can't cope. I'll address that in a minute. Um, because you want to see, like, a true reflection. If you're trying to look at, like, minimal, minimal things from week to week, same with your progress pictures. Like, by all means, take them every week, and then you'll get one, say, weeks one to four, where you can kind of go back and look at them, but don't keep comparing your pictures. Give it time. You've got to give it time so that your body can adapt and your body can change, and then kind of look back at, back at it as, as a whole, not just, like, an obsessive keep looking, keep looking, because the time will pass anyway. Um... Same with measurements as well. You know, don't kind of dis... dis I'm thinking of the right word. I want to say disregard, but I feel like it's not right. <laughs> it's like not the right word. Um, don't ignore, but don't ignore, like, little measurements as well. Like, if you're weighing... Uh, weighing. Measuring yourself from week to week and you're losing, like, half an inch here and there, that is that is still, like, progress. Look at your progress as anything, um, especially, like, your weight and stuff as well. So one or two pounds a week, anything else is a bonus. That's something that I say to, like, all my clients. Um, so, again, don't, progress is progress. That's what the way that you should be looking at it, really, for conducive results. Um, another question was, the closer to my goal I get, the more... Oh, hang on, I've, I've written these down and my writing's all over the place. The closer to my goal I get, the more I weigh, it becomes an obsession. Um, the other thing with this that I wanted to talk about was what you've got to remember about the scales is it measures a mass and it doesn't tell you what that mass looks like. So, again, holding so much value in a number on a scale is just not a good reflection of what is actually going on. And I understand that, you know, you're like, you, you're wanting to see a change and you want to, you're wanting to see it fast, but you've got to get the detachment from um, using that as something that you value in yourself by. Because the thing is, I've got at the moment, I've got one client who weighs 10 stone and I've got another client who weighs um, 7 stone. 
she's like late seven, it's like, it's like seven stone 13 or something like that. She's a tiny little girl, she's really petite, um, but she can lift a ton of weight. Um, and my client who, I don't want to name names here, my, my client who weighs 10 stone has got a smaller waist, believe it or not, than my client who weighs 7 stone 13. And that's where body composition comes into it. So just because you weigh a certain amount on a scale, it doesn't really tell you anything that's going on in terms of what your body's looking like. So again, when it comes to... Um, you know, measuring methods and how to measure your progress, don't just use that scale as a value. Don't value yourself by what it's saying on the scale. It might be that you don't weight train at all at the moment and it might be something you want to get into. And I'm not, I talk about weight training because that is what I do with like, the majority of my girls. That is what I like specialising. Um, but, you know, again, if you run, try and get it to a point where you, you're kind of valuing what it is that you're doing in your progress and yourself on other things. So it might be you try and get a faster time, for example, or you try and get, um, I'm just trying to think of another example off the top of my head. But you know, there's, there's a million and one ways that you can kind of quantify progress without it just all being an obsession with a number on a scale. Because again, it's just not, it's not giving you a true reflection of what's actually going on in there. Um, so yeah, so that really is pretty much it. Now, Rebecca Jane Hoyle's saying, I can't cope with seeing a picture of my bod. Now, for all intents and purposes, progress pictures are a really, really good way to go. Because I know, I think Rebecca, over the last two weeks, have you lost four pounds? Or you've lost a little bit, haven't you, anyway? Um, so again, it is something that, that is a good way of gauging what it is that you're doing. So if you want to, I know it's not 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 great. Text, get someone else to take them and just save them in like a folder if you, if you, you know, you really don't like seeing the pictures. Um, but they are, they are a good gauge. They're a good, a good... Emma J. Preston, you are late to the party, Emma. <laughs> um, I'm nearly done. I just lost two pounds. So yeah, I mean, it's not it's not going to reflect massively on a picture. But again, it's like I say this a lot to people that people say to me sometimes, I can lose like two pounds, and because I'm small, the amount of people that oh my god, you've lost weight, and I'm like, I've lost like two pounds. I have not lost a lot of weight, and that again comes back down to body composition, depending on what how your body's made up. And just going back again to um, when I was talking about my two clients waist measurement as well so even though i've got a client who weighs 10 stone and even though i have a, a client the same height who weighs about seven i'm sure it's like seven stone 13 tiny little girl um my 10 stone client has a smaller waist and people say to me all the time like oh i've got a small waist and i'm like well i haven't really got that small a waist but the thing is with me my shoulders are quite broad which makes me look like i'm, I'm smaller at my waist than i am I, my waist isn't overly small especially not compared to these two clients i'm talking about i think my waist is something like an inch and a half more than um these two particular clients but and again if, if you're looking at like body composition wise and you're looking to change your body with something like weight training these are all techniques that you've got to look at as well so you want a smaller waist what well, you, you don't necessarily have to even train your waist you don't have to train your abs work on your shoulders work on your glutes um same kind of thing so again body composition is where it's at again i'm gonna wrap this up now I'm just seeing if there's any more questions. So if you do have any more questions, just pop them in below because I am going to finish this video. Um, but again, if you are weighing yourself and you're getting obsessed with weighing yourself, stop it. Because I've, uh, again, one of my clients that I've got in at the minute, um, and she will tell yourself, she, she freaks out. She does freak out quite often, especially with like scale weight and she likes to research everything, which again is fine. Like I say to everyone, don't just take my word for it. Go and, go and have a look. But it's a minefield out there when it comes to diet and nutrition. And the thing that you've got to do is always bring it back to the context of your own situation. Um, because you'll just end up reading all sorts of things and second, guess, second guessing things and then trying to do things that really aren't conducive to your goal or what you're trying to do. So again, it's the same the same kind of thing. When you're weighing yourself, again, just get a few different avenues. Um, weigh yourself, take pictures. If you're one of my clients, I'll um, I'll do your body fat for you. If I don't, if I'm not doing it already, because I know some of you I don't I don't do it very often with. Um, but yeah, just get a few different avenues to be going at. Then you can kind of see your progress as you're going along, um, and that's probably the best way to to go about it. So don't just get obsessed with the scales. Um, so any more questions because I'm gonna um, I'm gonna sign off because I've got a client in in oh it's 45 minutes I've got ages yet <laughs> but if you do have any questions if you have anything that you want me to cover as well if you post in the group 
and I will um, I will cover it in the group as well. If you are in the group, I've not been great with like advertising this or telling people about it, but I've just redone the um, thirty day fat loss secrets. So if you haven't already had that, there's loads of really useful stuff in there's loads of new stuff. The majority of it is new as well, so you won't have seen any of the stuff in there before. And it's just thirty days of content that has. Um, Loads of different stuff in, like every day relates to something to do with like fat loss and how you can implement it into your own day, your own diet, your own training. Um, there's some mindset stuff in there as well. So all the inner bitch stuff that I do on SOS, there's some of that in there as well. So if you haven't done SOS with me, a lot of it kind of crosses over. If you have done SOS with me, it's a good idea to um, just catch up with it and stuff as well because you'll you'll probably enjoy it. So a lot of that does cross over. So if you want that, if you go onto um, my website and go to the top blue box. So if you don't know, I know most of you know this already, but it's www.2hot801word.co.uk and every page has like a blue banner at the top that says you can put your, um, like put your email address and your name in. I think at the minute it says something about a 14 day guide, but that's old, that's, that needs to go. So it's the 30 day fat loss thing and the fake away's ebook, the taster ebook you'll get through if you haven't already. And then the, 30 days worth, <laughs> can't speak today, the 30 days worth of emails will follow that. Um, so yeah, that's a quite a good thing to um, be going on with at the moment. As well, if anybody is coming to Group PT, booking is open for that as well. And I think most people are already booked on who's coming. So that's Thursday at 7pm um, at Intership in Cole. So I'm going to sign off because nobody's giving me any more questions. But if you do want to, uh, if you want me to go through anything else, just comment below and I'll address it later on. Because I know there's not tons of you watching anyway. You're all obviously busy eating your tea and stuff. Um, so I will see you later on. Steph, who's watching? Is she gone? I think she's still here. I will see you at seven. <laughs> right, I'm going. See you later. Bye-bye.